turn the lights on, you can see only the left low beam is on, but when you switch it to high beams, the right one, <laughs> the right high beam comes on, the left does not. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a really interesting one. This 2010 Dodge Caliber with some lighting problems. Headlights, turn signals, uh, the rear wiper doesn't work, I noticed that. And the customer said that this issue started happening all at once. History of the vehicle, um, about a year and a half ago, uh, they brought it here for a similar problem uh, where I think the left rear and the right front turn signals weren't working and the only thing I did was I cleaned up the contacts on the bulb on the left rear turn signal and everything else seemed to work and it drove fine for a year and a half crazy stuff but now a lot more stuff doesn't work let's uh, play around with it so turn the lights on you can see only the left low beam is on but when you switch it to high beams, the right one, <laughs> the right high beam comes on, the left does not. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. <laughs> um, turn signals, left one works, and then it starts blinking fast because the left rear is not blinking. Just the tail lights are on. Also, I noticed the license plate lights are not working and that was an issue last time too let's look at the right turn signal so the right rear works right front MIA okay so those are all the lighting problems and then the rear wiper does not work but the washer does Now these are all controlled by the infamous Tipum body control module. We have only two codes stored, left rear turn signal control high, uh, circuit high and front right turn lamp control circuit high. Those codes were stored in there the last time around. So where do we start? Let's go to the back, start with the left rear turn signal because that was an issue last time. See what we find there and kind of go step by step. I don't know why it's not sending uh, setting codes for the headlights because if, the, if a filament was burned out it would set a circuit high code like there's no ground. So in this case we might be looking at more than just some burned out bulbs. Step one, license plate bulbs they were just burned out bulbs. 194's so let's pop these in and then take off the left rear turn signal bulb. Okay, so I have the hazard lights on and this bulb here looks to be in perfect shape. Filament's not burned out, so we do have another problem. We can look at the wiring diagram, see which wire is the turn and brake wire. And see what's going on with the with the voltage on it, why is this bulb not lighting? The contacts look good, nothing's burned out, so this is going to be a little more interesting. Okay, so the three wires here have the lamp socket unplugged. The ground is the black with the green stripe, and then the turn and brake comes on this dark green and red. So, no tail light here, even though our hazards are on. We can check the uh, regular tail lamp circuit right here. Tail lamps are on. That works, so our ground is good for sure. But we have no, absolutely no signal on this dark green and red. So we have to go towards the source of this, which will be in the tip -um. So Here's the wiring diagram. Left rear turn 
lamp driver. It looks like C4. Is there a pin number? Let's see here. There's the battery. So every single lamp has its own driver. All right, rear turn. There's a license light. So parking lamp circuit works fine. Parking lamp feed. Backup lamp. Right rear turn lamp. Oh, let's see what we have. Uh, so let's focus just on this circuit. Let's find this C4. Do our voltage check there. All right, so here we are at the tip -um. You can actually lift it up pretty easily. And we have located the wires for the turn signal drivers. First, let's do the right front versus the left front. They're right next to each other. This white and tan and white and red. These two wires. So here's our test light going to ground. And on the white and tan, we have nothing. On the white and red, we do. Hazards are on. So that driver is not putting out any voltage. Unfortunately, that's not a good sign for this tip -um. Let's compare the rear turn signals here. Dark green and red on the neighboring connector right here. Also, nothing on the turn signal. And let me look up the right rear driver. So the right rear <clears throat> driver is on this white and yellow pin, two pins over from the dark green and red. That one works. That one does not. So let's pull these connectors out and see if there's any corrosion or green crusties or if it's just a bad tip -um, which I assume it's going to be. Alright, so for the low beams, we have C5 number E3 violet and red, that does not work. And left low beam, C4, D4, white and dark blue, that does work. So the headlight's on, my test light is on here. Oh. If we move over to C5, E3, violet and red. No voltage on there. That confirms. And then the high beams. Now the right one works. That's C4, D3, white and gray. That'll be that one. Sure enough. But the left high beam does not work. That's C5 or number E4. No good on that one. So what's the pattern here? <laughs> How are all these circuits related? We can open up the box and see if there's anything wonky in there or burned out. Well, here's the tip -um. Cover comes off easy, but then you're kind of stuck. I don't see anything burned or cracked. All the pins look clean. So this does seem like a chip or logic failure. And when you're driving, you know, headlights from a circuit board like this through little tiny pins, that is terrible engineering design. Things are going to heat up. They're going to fail. Cars used to have just switch and a relay. Relays never fail. Well, almost never. But 
something like this. If one little piece on here fails, you have to replace the whole stupid fuse box, which is just insane. But unfortunately, that's the case with this one. Uh, the rear wiper, I mean, the customer didn't even tell me about that, so... Needs a new tip them regardless. We need the lights to work. And then, uh, if the wiper comes back to life, that's a bonus. If not, we'll do a separate diagnosis on there. But, you know, this is not serviceable. It's really frustrating. So there's a serial number and part number. We'll try to source a new tip-em. So looking for a used tip-em here on Rock Auto. Even the Dorman one, that's our part number, the AB. Man, these things are expensive. It's almost 700 bucks. You gotta return your core. If you wanna get a Mopar, I guess the AC, it's updated. Man, thousand bucks. Wow. If the owner wants, we can try to uh, <laughs> go on eBay here. They're around, you know, $100 to $200 used ones. That one's from Colorado. So, that's unfortunate. Pretty expensive item and hard to, you know, hard to find them. But we'll, we'll see what the customer wants to do. So a little bonus footage here. We want to be thorough. The rear wiper, I have the switch on. It's being commanded off and on. There's on, off. Rear wiper's not working. The pin for the driver here is this brown and light green wire. So if we take battery positive here through a fuse and we touch that wire, the rear wiper works. So that confirms that the motor is good, but our um, Our tip-em is again responsible for that. So we're going to try to get a used one on eBay and hopefully it solves all these problems. Well, back to the Dodge Caliber. We got a used tip-em from eBay. This thing supposedly works. It's not screwed together. <laughs> Let's pop it in, see what happens with the lights. Alright, so here's the original tip -em. Just want to compare the position of all the fuses, that they're all in place. Everything looks good. Well, that one doesn't look original. But let's, I don't know, let's pop it in and see, see what happens. Well, here's the moment of truth. New tip -em is in. Headlights, yay! High beams, low beams, awesome. Let's try the uh, hazard lights here. That works. That works. That works. And that works. <laughs> Let's see if the rear wiper comes back to life. I like it. Sweet. Let's uh, start it up. We can scan it for codes, make sure there's no like VIN mismatch. What I've read online is if the tip and part number is exactly the same from the same model vehicle, it shouldn't, you shouldn't have any problems. You don't need to reprogram it or anything. Um, but yeah, all customer complaints fixed. I like it. So we're doing a full coat scan with the new tip -em installed. Let's see what the fault faults are. So 
So all these stored codes, configuration mismatch. So let's delete all the codes and see what comes back. Okay. Clear system DTCs, yes. Okay. Okay, so it's back out. Turn the key off. Turn the key on. Start it. Turn the lights on, make sure everything works. High beam indicator, left turn signal, right turn signal, rear wiper, front wiper. Okay, shut it off. And key on and do another health report. All right, so we have absolutely no fault codes stored, so no pro no programming required on this one. On a newer vehicle, you would have to program the gateway, but hey, on these things, I mean, the options are limited, so if you can find a good used tip them with the same part number, that's your best option. Otherwise, I think you can find a like a repair service. Again, you can go online and search for that, but... I think customer will be happy, at least for a while, until this one fails. <laughs> uh, thanks all for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.